welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Good morning. Uh, we're uh, midweek here in uh, third week of January. Uh, where this broadcast, we're actually uh, through your, uh, I can see in your background, you still have Christmas <laughs> joy. Uh, there. I do, but my decorations are not up through the end of January. I'll just clarify that for everyone. We are taping early. <laughs> Well, uh, make sure you leave them up for the wedding. I, I am. I'm going to leave them up long enough for the wedding because I know there's a lot of out-of-town guests coming in that will delight to see, including you guys, delight to see what this place looks like all decorated for Christmas. <laughs> well, uh, it'll be exciting and uh, <clears throat> everything getting ready for the wedding? Oh, yeah. Going great. Um, things are moving along. I was just uh, up at the coffee shop with Caleb and Olivia yesterday and they were getting some final final planning things in on uh, everything that's going on. And they officially have all of honeymoon number two. I've told you they're doing two honeymoons. Right. Um, they've got all of honeymoon number two planned out now. And it's been fun to watch how God has brought that together. The wedding should be just a fantastic time. It's, it's going to be a great celebration of an amazing couple that God has brought together that truly just push each other more towards God all the time. And yep. it's beautiful to watch. Yeah, it is beautiful. We've, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, as we uh, are obviously in the Christmas month, we're in it, we're taping this in the Christmas month. Um, and uh, one of the things that Linda and I have learned, particularly uh, Linda, uh, is that there's a great joy in uh, truly uh, giving to people that don't expect it. Mm, you're um, so right and uh it's it's where they you know you can see the 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 heart of the desire for it but they you know for whatever reason they, they either can't afford it or they can't get there and <clears throat> so we've we've done a, a couple things one is uh, and this kind of started uh several years ago for linda uh we were at walmart uh doing christmas shopping for our, mm -hmm. our, our family and um we're kind of in different sections and she goes down into the uh, toy area mm -hmm. and she sees this little boy probably seven eight years old he's sitting on the floor and he's got he's got a toy and he's clutching it you mm -hmm. know in his arms right <clears throat> and um and linda you know gets prompted by the spirit and she says you must really like that he says i do but my dad says I can't have it. Mm -hmm. um, it's too expensive. And um, and she says, "Oh, okay." And so she she comes and finds me. She said, "Rich, um, I think we need to, to pay for this kid's toy because it really he really wants it, Aww. and it'll thrill his heart. And I really think we should do it. okay." So uh, I go there and uh, okay, and he's still sitting <laughs> clutching mm -hmm. this thing, you know. Uh, okay, I tell you what, <clears throat> take us to your dad. Uh, we'll ask him if it's okay, mm -hmm. and then we'll we'll take care of it. You know, so he does takes us to a dad. Hey, dad, and we said to him, hey, I know that your little boy here really likes this, and we we would just like to be uh, helpful, and could we you know help pay for it? He said, no, no. I said, no, it's okay. Uh, let us do this for you. You know, okay. So <clears throat> uh, we get in line, and his dad and the little boy and and his brothers there too. Okay. Uh, and uh, Linda says, "Hey, by the way, Dad, are you going? To, are you a believer? Uh, yes. Uh, do you go to church?" He said, "Oh, sure." Mm -hmm. And the little boy says, "No, we don't." <laughs> <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes, truth will always you come. Know, and, right? Linda, and Linda <laughs> says, "You know, well, you know, uh, you ought to reconsider that God wants to bless you way more than we do, and but you need to be with Him." Sweetness. You know, and so, you know, go to church and, you know, learn to get back in the word. And 
And so we go through it, pay for it, you know, and leave. And um, I go out, I'm going out to the car and Linda's coming behind me. And it strikes her that she saw that other boy there with a sadness in his face. Mm -hmm. And she says, oh my gosh, we paid for that one kid, but we never let nothing for the for other. the other one, and he's got the similar desire and the same problem. Mm-hmm. And and I said, well, go find him and let's take care of it. You know, so she she has to find him in the parking lot. I love it. And she it. says, you know, hey, and she says to the little other boy, other other brother, I'm so sorry that we didn't consider you. You'd like something too, wouldn't you? Yes. She says, okay, come with me. We're going to take care of it right now. Dad, is that okay? Yeah, sure. So we went and took care of it, you know, for her. So um, it was it was a thrill. And what Linda does, we do this. Linda's kind of the driver of it. Uh, is uh, we 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 basically take uh, a uh, kind of a an amount of cash, set it aside, mm-hmm. and all Linda does is, who do you want me to give it to today? Right, um, and it's not. Uh, there's not and a system. Listen to the spirit. There's not yeah. a system to Let it. Let him lead. It's just yeah. you know individuals. Either I can either give them some cash. Usually we're trying to buy them something that they want. Um, well, uh, with Michelle passing, we discovered, and we were we knew a little bit about this, but we didn't know the extent of it. Is she was heavily involved in the local food bank, right? And we found out that. Um, whenever they got low on something, like a certain supply or a certain type of food, right? They would call her, mm. and she'd say, "I'll go take care of it," and she'd get it and take it to the food bank, you know. And so, we, you know, we let that everybody know that. And we've a actually a, a lot of people food. gave memorials for Michelle. Right. You had of, that set up as one of them. Of uh, hey, donate to a local food bank or your food bank, and they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, uh, Linda, Linda and I went over to the food bank and talked about it and say, you know, Michelle did this and we'd like to help you do that, Kelp. And, and, uh, and we talked about, you know, what can we do to help you? Mm-hmm. He said, well, uh, a lot of food we get is, and he, he used the word kind of low quality. Mm-hmm. He said, for Christmas, it would really be nice if somebody gave us really high quality food that we could have, because what they do is they set it up as a store mm-hmm. um, and the people come, they have appointments, they come and they shop mm. and uh, they have to pay a little, just a slight bit of money, right. you know, like five bucks, but they can fill up a cart, but they shop instead of, Hey, we're going to give you this. Pick out, pick they out make what, choices pick of out what, what you they want, desire. You know? Yeah, uh, and he said we really need high quality stuff that we don't generally have. And I said like what? Well, like frozen turkeys and mm-hmm. uh, you know really nice muffins and bagels and you know and things like that. Okay, so right. so Linda uh, says, well let's 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 do this. So she she recruits uh, Peter Shera, uh Aiden, who's here, mm-hmm. grandson, Aiden's girlfriend, Aiden's girlfriend's mother. And, and we go to this store. I and, love it. And she says, okay, everybody grab a cart and fill it up with whatever you would buy for yourself. Mm. Um, and go out through the store and buy whatever you want to buy, fill it up. Um, and we'll pray that the Holy Spirit is going to use your interest mm-hmm. that somebody else is going to be interested to in. Meet to meet the needs of someone else. We do. <laughs> and uh, we all come back. And we've got seven full carts of food. I love it. I love it. And so <laughs> we got to check out. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so I go to the guy and I said, you're going to check out seven carts of food. It's all going to go on one bill. Uh, he said, here's what we're doing. Uh, we're going to take all this food to the food bank. And I know it's going to take you a long time and it's going to be, you know, hard a little but, tedious but, you know <laughs> stay with us and uh, we'll do it. okay he said okay and he's kind of funny you know so he's making comments and then uh <clears throat> he gets his manager and says mm-hmm. hey these people are going to help the food bank how about if we you know gave them certain things as well as a little bit of a discount and the manager says sure uh oh, that's great so he does that um so <laughs> we click we check out <clears throat> and uh he <laughs> 
I pay for it, and he hits the thing where the receipt comes out. Right. The receipt is 10 feet long. <laughs> we had 557 items. <laughs> and uh, and the food bank, we took it, We and then we drove it to the food bank, and I dropped it off and carried it in, and they took us on a tour. Uh, Which and, I'm sure just carrying it in was a bit of an ordeal, uh, that, too. <laughs> that was an ordeal. Um, and then he said, we'll weigh this, because we said we keep statistics. We'll let you know. <clears throat> later you know how much how much it weighed and uh he said this is so and then a couple of the heads of the of the food bank came out oh man this is great this people are gonna love having this kind of stuff Aww. they never have this stuff you know and, uh so it was uh and everybody what linda and noticed and said you know interesting enough you know yeah we know that these people are going to be thrilled by it but she said <clears throat> the fun of us doing it mm-hmm. and being in fellowship and going through that experience yes. as opposed to just handing them a check mm-hmm. is we got to be participant in God's work because we'll never actually see the individual re- recipient right. be joyful. We know they're going to be joyful. The joy was actually us us being joyful. Getting, that's uh, so fun. Yeah. I love that. So, and that speaks to, you know, so many times you share about covenant and how we are blessed to be a blessing. Right. Right. And that is that in motion right there. I love it. Yeah. So it's uh, fun. Linda's having a good time. And she always has a good time at Christmas uh, with uh, how does God want to give her, have her give stuff away. And, yep. you know, the privilege of, of blessed to be a blessing. And we say this in our covenant discussion is whenever you get to experience giving it away, whether it's a truth, somebody, mm-hmm. somebody finds something, discovers something, receives something. We really always say this, is there anything better than that? You know, and right. no, it isn't. You know, that we get to join God in his heart for people to bless them mm-hmm. because we got blessed, you know, and we have a heart to do it, you know. So it, it, it's kind of fun. And uh, I did want to share that, you know, not as a, uh, isn't isn't that great on our behalf. It's really the privilege of it. Uh, right. Of, and seeing how it works and the fun of it, fun of it and the beauty of it and how God is so precious in uh, thrilling people's heart. I think I just you yes. just sense the heart of God. So it's Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Well, here is we were talking about uh, prayer. Uh, last time we talked about truth. And uh, Kathy led us into this great discussion of uh, the word and the different aspects of the word and uh, why God wants us to maintain our commitment to mm-hmm. abiding if you abide in my word, you'll know the truth. The truth will set you free. And there's got to be a passion for abiding because it's, it's thrilling. Mm-hmm. And a passion to keep going to truth is like, oh, well, if that's true, like you said last time about Hupamia, well, it means coming under the authority of God's life through abiding. Right. Well, if that's true, if that's really what that word means, well, then how do I do that? See how, see how mm-hmm. beautiful it is. And, you, and yes. you know that is it drives us you know, to keep abiding. So uh, we're going to pick up uh, Nehemiah. We set up the stage. Uh, he's part of the remnant, uh, captured, living in Babylonia. <clears throat> he's living a life of luxury, mm-hmm. uh, covenant life. Uh, he's not asking God, well, what should I do differently? What should I, what should I do to work for you? He's just abiding, enjoying life, and uh, experiencing life. And along comes some friends of his from Jerusalem, and they visit him, and how's it going? Right. Now we call it a divine interruption. A, a divine interruption. Like, it's awful. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, because Nehemiah <clears throat> had abided, he knew there was a promise. And the promise was, um, if you return to me, I'll restore everything that's been destroyed. Mm-hmm. And he knew that. And we'll see that he knew that. Um, so it would be like... Uh, when people come across my path or your path, uh, I've got a situation going on right now where I'm going to get a phone call here in the next day or two of somebody that is in in pretty deep mess. Mm-hmm. And um, it wasn't my heart isn't well too bad <laughs> too bad. Right. Uh, hope you hope you put up with it. It's well, wait a minute. I know something. It's called covenant. Mm-hmm. God says, I'm going to bless you to be a blessing if you have a heart to go. So, um, Rich, do you have the same heart that I do toward that person that's really suffering? 
Mm-hmm. Uh, now I can't I can't just give it to them without them having a heart to follow me because I can only deliver it in the kingdom of God and and somebody has to choose to walk with me, but because of their pain, invite them to do that and 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 say something about it. You know, okay, mm-hmm. well I'm joining God in His heart. Yes, it's not like well. Yeah, I don't have time for that. Or, yeah, too bad. That's awful. And I'm sad for you. Good luck. No, it's you join in at that at that level of, of emotion. So Nehemiah did. Mm-hmm. Uh, now read. Go ahead and read uh, four through eleven. This is Nehemiah one four to eleven. And we'll see how what prayer looked like for him. Sure. It says, so it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven, and I said. I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open, that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now, day and night, for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray, that the word the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you are cast out to the farthest part of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name. And let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. For I was the king's cupbearer. Yep. Um, So um, he goes and weeps. Um. I'm sad, and because it's sadness, see, isn't, well, I should be sad. Mm-hmm. It's that the Holy Spirit prompted him mm-hmm. with, I'm trying to show you something, and I do want you to feel it. Yeah. Uh, I want you to sense something. Uh, I don't want you to shove it off. I don't want you to be callous about it. I don't mm-hmm. want you to say, well, so what? Uh, by the way, <clears throat> um, It's not like any situation that ever came before him, he's supposed to go to sadness. Right. Uh, It's a prompting of the Holy Spirit that basically unsettled him and led to this holy discontent. Right, In which God was going to invite him to move in and act with him. Yeah, and I see, I believe that because of what we see here with his relationship with God, is that he went to that place through a prayer dialogue Mm -hmm. with God when he heard it. You know, again, this is spiritual. Uh, the Holy Spirit prompted him, checked him, uh, gave him a, a pay attention. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he said, huh, I know I've been abiding in this truth. And we'll see that we'll see where he was. But he was in Deuteronomy chapter 30, actually. You said, mm-hmm. but that's not what's happening. Uh, and I do know, and he does know, by the way, that the temple's been rebuilt. Right. But evidently, you know, and again, remember, he's never been there. He's never been in a temple, interesting enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, well, so what they're telling me means that even though they have a temple, they're not restored yet. Right. At all. So, but you said in Deuteronomy 30 that you would... Mm-hmm. But you haven't. So help me with it. Help me understand this. Mm-hmm. Is is uh, and then see, I believe God went into. How do you feel about this? Mm-hmm. What's your thought about this? Are you concerned about it? Yes. Right. Why? What makes you sad about it? You know, and he because he wept for several days, and I mm-hmm. believe it was like, oh man, this really uh, triggers me. And I need to go further with this instead of, eh, so what? Mm-hmm. Is he was in dialogue with God and, and he was out of out of his truth 
well, I know something about this and I don't see it happening. And God says, yeah, what go into the depth of what you see and what you feel, because that's how I feel. Right. Okay, then he gets to that point. Um, he starts to recognize that God is saying, do you see, do you see, do you see? Yes. So <laughs> Nehemiah uh, says, uh, what do you got to say about this? Mm-hmm. Um, he enters into a dialogue with God. Okay, right. now, uh, interesting enough, the verse, the chapter tells us uh, uh, something interesting about that. So um, in uh, uh, chapter 1, uh, when, he's, when he was uh, in there, um, uh, is that um, in verse 1, it says, this happened in the month of Chislev. Mm-hmm. And that month is December. Mm. Uh, so he's getting this in December. Um, he says, um, I, I fasted and I wept and I prayed uh, before the God of heaven. And then I said, uh, oh God, you who keep covenant and mercy. Mm-hmm. And you said, I you love said, that he you starts said. the prayer with covenant. Yeah. I'm uh, standing on covenant. I'm this standing is who on you covenant. are. <laughs> uh, so in December, he gets the news. Mm-hmm. Pay attention. God says, I'm interrupting your life. Right. You didn't ask for it. You weren't saying, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? You're operating normally. Mm-hmm. I've allowed you to operate normally and thrilled you to operate normally. But hey, guess what? I'm about ready to change your life. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a reason for that is I need you to join me in my bigger story. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to do something here. Um, and by the way, this can come for us. It can come uh, a job opportunity, uh, a promotion, uh, a uh, I'm really asking you to consider. I've got a couple right now that have been told, get your house ready for sale. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, this is funny uh, and this is typical. They heard it, and they, and I and I helped confirm it. Yes, they said. Well, before we do that, we well, got to know where we're going. <laughs> Not necessarily. I said. Uh, well, did God tell you that? No. What did He tell you? Get it ready. Mm-hmm. Step one. So that's all. Okay. He's about ready to interrupt your life. He's mm-hmm. about ready to do something. And he's not telling you all that he's doing, just I'm giving you a heads up. And in order to fulfill what I have for you planned, mm-hmm. get your house. Now, I said, is that was that on your mind? No. Were you asking God about it? No. What happened? God interjected mm-hmm. and interrupted and say, I'm about ready to do something. And I'm going to I'm going to alert you. And here's my step of instruction. So he says to Jeremiah, I want you to pay attention to this. OK. He starts in December and says, well, what do you got to say about this? Mm-hmm. And God says, well, I'm going to restore. This is the time I'm going to restore Israel. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're telling me. And he goes back into the word, which he's been abiding in because he knew it. But he goes back to the scrolls and he goes back to the processing. And like, okay, I, I'm going to reread Deuteronomy. And I see the verses where you're saying what you're going to do. So you say you're going to, this is it. This is the time. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to, I'd love for that to happen. I'm going to pray that. And then God says, uh, guess what, son? I'm going to send you. Mm -hmm. You're sending me. (laughs) You're going to send me back to Israel to do that. Yeah, I'm sending you. Well, uh, do you know, I, I, let me tell you, let me tell you a few things about that. Uh, God, <laughs> uh, I'm the cupbearer. I work for the king. I'm a. I'm a still part of the remnant captivity. I can't just leave. Mm-hmm. I can't just say I'm going. So how's that going to work? There's a lot of dialogue going on in these four months, right? Let, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you how it's going to work. Um, and uh, so the dialogue, the prayer was 
I, I, I understand something you're saying, but I need to now go deeper into, into what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And, and it all, what is it all that you're involving me? So it, it, remember, and this is cool about prayer, Nehemiah didn't say, okay, great, I heard you say you're going to take care of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I pray you do. Father, would you restore Israel? Let me know when you do. Right. It was, it was huh. So you're going to restore Israel. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to have to provide protection, which they don't have. What does that mean? Well, you got to build a wall. Okay, great. Well, how is that going to work? Well, uh, I'm going to send you. You're sending me. Mm-hmm. I can't just get up and go. How is that going to And see how it goes? Every day, uh, he's going on and on and on and trying to understand the depth of that. Okay, we'll come back to wh- what you read. Uh, but now read verses uh, chapter 2 uh, and go down to um, uh, go ahead and back go down to 9 uh, 2 1 to 9 and it came to pass in the month of Nisan in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes when wine was before him that I took the wine and I gave it to the king now I had never been sad in his presence before therefore the king said to me why is your face sad since you are not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. So I became dreadfully afraid and said to the king, May the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs, lies waste and its gates are burned with fire? Then the king said to me, What do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said to the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah. To the city of my father's tombs that I may rebuild it. Then the king said to me, the queen also sitting beside him, how long will your journey be and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me and I set, a, set him a time. Furthermore, I said to the king, if it pleases the king, let letters be given to me for the governors of the region beyond the river that they must permit me to pass through till I come to Judah and a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he must give me the timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel, which pertains to the temple for the city wall and for the house that I will occupy. And the king granted them to me according to the good hand of God upon me. Then I went to the governors in the region beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. Okay, so um, if we go back to chapter one, um, and by the way, he, he says in chapter 2, this is now the month Nisan. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's April. Right. So four months have passed since so the original divine interruption. He's been dialoguing every day mm-hmm. with God. And this is important for us to understand prayer and God's will. Because for me, it would have been, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're sending me. You're sending me. Okay, great. Well, just tell me that everything that's going to happen and what I'm mm-hmm. supposed to do, and uh, you know, and let's do that by five tonight. Uh, <laughs> no, it was it was dialogue. It was step by step. It was questions. It was God saying, "Do you understand this? Well, how's that going to work? Well, how's that right. going to work? Well, how's well, that going to work?" Even even more than that, I think when you see the beginning of it, there was heart work right. that God did with Nehemiah. Right. In the beginning of this, you know, the divine interruption, and then in the beginning of his prayer, he starts with covenant, but then God brings him to a place of repentance for him and for the other Israelites. Well, yeah, and so because... I think that's a beautiful thing to see that it wasn't just about what God was going to do through him, it was what God was going to do in him as right, well. Right. And he started him at repentance. So, just let's take that as an example. Um, and, and uh, what he's doing here, and he's actually, you can go back to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 1 to 10. Mm-hmm. And you'll, you'll read everything that he just said. So mm-hmm. he had gone back to that and processed right. it. Right. Uh, well, it says in there, if you repent. Mm-hmm. So he read it. And, right. and, and this is what abiding, because he's remember, he's learning to abide and has abided. Okay, so you said, Father, if if we repent, mm-hmm. could you help me understand what exactly does that mean now? And since you're 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 involving me, 
are you asking me to repent? Mm -hmm. And what does that look like? And so it's days and days and days of discussion just about that. Yes, yeah. Uh, so that, well, do you understand this? And here's what I'm talking about. And you've read, you've read correctly my statement, mm -hmm. but the truth has to be applied now to you and this situation because you're understanding that this is the time. I'm going to fulfill this, you know, and I'm going to use you to fulfill it. And so get into the depth of it, get into the truth of it, and then ask me questions. Well, if that's true, we have to repent. What does that mean? And what is that? Right. And I, right. I'm not the one. I'm not the one that rebelled back in Jerusalem. Uh, yeah, you are. <laughs> your family. And let me show you some of your this. family's yeah. part of it. Uh, it's a heart thing. It's like mm -hmm. you said, I'm working on your heart, Nehemiah, for you to understand the depth of something that I want you to understand before we even worry about what to do. Mm -hmm. I need to show you who is going on and what's going on inside of you and to join me in my nature, which yes. is what I'm trying to give you. So we'll pick this up again next time. This is a great, such a great story that we're not going to be able to finish it, you know, in even a couple uh, sessions. So we'll pick it up. Uh, actually, it'll be next week now, but we'll pick it up uh, with um, uh, what happened mm -hmm. during those four months and how did that work and how beautiful it is to be uh, in relationship with God right. who can direct traffic to our lives and say, guess what? I've got something new for you to understand now, and I'm going to give it to you. So we'll we'll pick this up, but but we would urge you to be willing to be interrupted, mm -hmm. and and I would urge you as we're trying to learn here is don't push so quickly. Well, just tell me the answer, yes. or okay, great, that's nice. Let me know when you do it. Would you solve this problem? Uh, well, why don't you just enter into the beautiful opportunity to dialogue with him? for him to walk you down. And one thing you highlighted is it's going to change your heart too. Yes. Which is kind of fun. So we'll, we'll pick it up again next time. Very cool. Thanks so much for sharing. And thank you for joining us, everyone. If you have questions, be sure to send them in at questions at afjministry.com. And we'd love to talk about them. Yep. Hope everybody has a fantastic week. And join us tomorrow for Guest Thursday. Yep. We'll see Always you. a fun time. Always Take a fun care. time. See you then. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.